Hello world and welcome back. I'm Karu the Great Bear of the North and this is Europa Universalis 4 on the DLC after including Wire Nostra, 1.25 Royal Britannia patch, and a bunch of mods in the description box below. We are Venice and tail into the last episode, we just vassalized the Eastern Roman Empire. Yes! Excelsior. We're going to use their claims to take out the Ottomans. As soon as the Ottomans get in a little bit more trouble with, say, Hungary or some bunch of other people, but for now... We can turn our attentions to Naples. We can turn our attentions to Serbia. We do have, still have a claim on Scutari, uh, Scutari and Montenegro and things like this. But for now, corruption. Corruption is one of the most common and frequent factors of political and economic life. Never in history has this been more prominent than in these times of feudal regimes. Never in history has corruption been more prominent than in these times of presidents. <sighs> Try to eradicate the problems or we can ignore them. Let's ignore them. Why not? Because I'm not spending stability points on, on, on that. Now, with regards to Athens, we have a decision to make. We can do one of two things. We can either keep Athens or we can switch it over to the, to the Romans. Now, if we keep Athens, it will increase our power, which is good, but then we have to core it. But then it means we don't have to diplomatically annex it later. Let's core it. We might as well. It will reduce our overextension. It will reduce a bunch of other things. Um, and the Romans will eventually become happy with us anyways. Right. Uh, influenza. Rumors say that sailors came back from a trip sick like hell, and the ones who didn't die on board infested the whole city with their disease. It's time to act before the whole country dies from coughing and cold sweat. Quarantine the port and let them die. Verona gets quarantined influenza until... July 29th, 1458, so it will be for a full decade. It's better than letting it spread. So, yeah, there's that. Ragusa has insulted us. They're still guaranteed by the Ottomans. Yeah. And in previous, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, in a previous, like, like I said, I don't save scum. What you see is what you get. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. But if uh, in a previous run through where I had severe technical issues, the sound was terrible, the video was choppy, I don't really know why, um, Naples had actually declared independence from Aragon, and then I took them pretty much the entire eastern half of Naples over in the second, no, in the third episode uh, that I had recorded that day. So um, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that that's not happening again this time. Um, as much as I would love it to, as much as I would love to say support their independence, or, or just take them over, um, I don't think that's going to happen. But hey, we have, oh, England did surrender Maine peacefully, which is good. It's good. That's good for France. It's good for us. We don't have to go to war with them. So let's see what else we want to do. Um, Serbia is allied with Bosnia, right? Right. So what we can do Oh, we don't have any diplomats. What I was going to suggest is we could, we do have the claim on Zeta, which is also known as Montenegro today. Uh, I mean, the territories aren't completely contiguous, but uh, they mostly do overlap. Um, we could declare war on Serbia, take some territories from Bosnia as well, or we can just declare war on Serbia, take this, and then use that as a launching post to make legitimate claims on the rest. I think that's actually what we're going to do. I, I like that plan. We're going to do it this way. One army is going to come here. One army is going to come here. They're both going to start smashing around. Or maybe both go into Tarazzo. Yeah, because if they go to Dalmatia, they're going to have to... They're going to run into the fort anyways in Zadar. So yeah, we'll do it this way. We'll take Zeta, use that as a launching post to get claims on the rest. Um, yeah, that's, that's the plan. That is indeed the plan. All right. So, what did I want to do? I completely spaced on what I wanted to do. Um, wow. Okay, right, right. I need a diplomat with which to declare war, so we'll take the diplomat away from Naxos. There we go. Diplomacy. Declare war. Take core in Zeta. There we go. We'll leave that diplomat kicking around just for a little bit. Um, Carlo Modigliano. Uh, yes. 
There we go. We'll invade Zeta. And yeah. Ooh, what I could do. Oh, there's a new Pope. Heyo. Um, I could use these guys and I can invade Dalmatia. I'll be considered the defender, which would be good. But you know what? I'll try to take over some of their territories first. Seal of Confession. Religious institutions are considered sacrosanct and above the petty plots and schemes of countries and spies. That's why it's crucial to infiltrate them. Many secrets that would never be spoken aloud are told in confidence to religious authorities, which the practice of confession has even turned into an institution. A church, in one of the countries we have focused our espionage efforts on, has presented an unprecedented opportunity to exploit this. One of our local agents, posing as a nun in the local convent, has found that she can overhear the conversations from confessionals while doing chores in the church. While she is likely to escape detection, the plan would outrage religious authorities if discovered. Is it worth taking our chances? We could. It will increase our the, the, the size of our network in Aragon. But there's a 30% chance that the Pope will find out, and um, that's really bad, considering we want to be on at least relatively good terms with the Pope. We do not want them to excommunicate us. I can probably say him instead of them. Barely shit the Pope has always been a dude. And probably always will be. Seal of Confession. Unthinkable. She should inform the priests that they can be heard. Gain 10 diplomatic power. I like power. There we go. We will... Oh, we have access through Albania. We didn't need to go the, the naval route. That's okay. There we go. Smash their fleets. Smash them, I say. Fantastic. Good, good, good. The Renaissance! Oh yeah, also in that series in that three episodes that I had to can because of technical issues, the, the Renaissance started in Venice. So, you know. Since the fourteenth century, the wealthy and powerful in the Italian city states have been patronizing artists and scholars willing to explore the old Roman and Greek societies of their forefathers. As a cultural movement, the Renaissance already encompasses most of the region and has a profound impact on literature, art, philosophy, and music. Humanist scholars are also analyzing the society in which they live, comparing it to the ideals of the classical philosophers. At the turn of 1450, Renaissance humanism has grown into a more mature movement, ready to permeate all aspects of society. A new ideal for rulers, as well as those who are ruled, is spreading as quickly as the early printers can distribute copies of these new ideas. A true Renaissance humanist is an expert on everything, from politics and philosophy, to art, textual analysis, music, and architecture. The Renaissance is now ready to reshape the world to better fit its classical ideals. And where did the Renaissance start? Let's find out in Montfrat. Really? I've never had it start in Montfrat. Okay. I mean, I've heard it had to start in Ferrara, in, in Urbino, in Bologna, in Mantua, in Milan, in Venice, in Firenze, in Roma, but never in Montfrat. Kosovo is ours. Good. And we're going to do this basically just to, to smash around Serbia and Bosnia a little bit. Um try to just earn a little bit of money from them would also be really nice. I don't actually want to engage them in, in a straight-up open battle, though. Especially one where we will be attacking into a place where there will be a uh, a, a defender bonus. So, um... Yes. Where are you going? You're going to Skoder? There we go. Let's send these guys back around. Let's smash them around a little bit more, Bosnia, that is. Um, we have a, we Somehow we lost the trade, Casas Bella against Hungary. Didn't even know we had a Casas, trade Casas Bella against Hungary, but okay. Yeah, this is, this is, this is a smashing. This is, <laughs> this is steamrollery at its finest. Hope I never drank any of that poor vintage. Whatever, that event's not really worth reading, to be perfectly honest. Um, Bosnia. Oh, this is good. We're going to get money from Bosnia, then we're going to turn immediately right around and get territory and money from Serbia. Then we're going to claim some additional territory from them in subs for subsequent wars. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, first, Bosnia. How much money? 75 plus... War reparations and trade power. What? We have almost turned... Oh, we don't actually have your capital yet. Oops, I thought we already had their capital. And I was wondering whether we're going to give me everything that I ever wanted. Um, there we go. Oh, this is good. This is definitely double plus good. 
I mean, not quite Naples declaring independence. Good, but it is good. Yeah, yeah, there's... There's a Siege of Treviso, but uh, it doesn't really affect us because we're totally going to finish this siege before they get theirs, and they'll be out of the war anyways. Actually, Serbia will probably be also out of the war. Be out of the war fairly soon, so this is a good start. There is an election, and we could stay in office, because technically in, in, in real life, the Doge in Venice was elected for life. It wasn't one of the Florentine things or one of the Ancona things, one of the Pisan things where they just rotated through Gonfalon years. The Doge was elected for life. In this game, it's just a standard republic. I think that should be changed. But anyways, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it around. One, because he will gain in experience, he will gain in ability. Basically one additional diplomatic and military and administrative power per month, which is fantastic. And 50 power in one of the three categories. Um, at the cost of 10 Republican tradition? Yeah, like I said. Uh, last episode, we eventually do want to turn ourselves into a monarchy. We already have a duke, right? The doge is equivalent of a duke. Um, in fact, the, there is the there's some kingdoms. The kingdom of Dalmatia was under Venice for a while, so yeah, we can totally claim a monarchy. Transfer trade power, war reparations. This is very good. Boom, fantastic, excellent. I'm, I'm. You know what? This isn't the best start as Venice I've ever had, but it's a pretty decent one. There we go. And now Serbia will give us Zeta. What will it cost to get Kosovo? Only 75, only 45 di diplomacy. Um, not really enough um, uh, aggressive expansion to make this not worthwhile. So we'll do transfer trade power, war reparations, and three of their territories. Yeah, let's do it. Boom! When talking about the regions we've conquered, I want to focus on why they would be important to the people we're playing as. In this case, the Venetians would be interested in trade and the ability to defend themselves from Ottoman expansion. Montenegro borders the Adriatic and would probably be most important to the Venetians. Historically, the Venetians did control much of this territory. Kotor, or Kataro to the Italians, was perhaps the most important city to the Venetians. Indeed, everyone from the Romans to the Byzantines to the Bulgarians, Serbs, Hungarians, Bosnians, Venetians, and Ottomans coveted the area. It's easy to see why. At the end of a long bay, it was very easy to defend the site from land or naval assault. In fact, the Venetians heavily fortified the site, the remains of which are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In addition, Kotor was an important religious site, being the home to one of only two cathedrals in Montenegro. Historically, the city was an important bulwark against Bogomil heresies and part of the border between the Catholic and Orthodox worlds. Budva, or Budua, was further down the coast from Kotor. It was one of the oldest Adriatic communities settled more than 2,500 years ago. Apparently, the city was founded by Cadmus, noted dragon slayer and husband to a goddess, after he was exiled from Thebes, which he also founded. Like Kotor, the Venetians built up major defenses once they took the city in 1420. Bar is currently the largest port in Montenegro, but it also has a long history, with evidence of Neolithic settlement. Its name derives from Antibari, meaning across from Bari, a city in Italy. Bar is the seat of an archdiocese that covers almost all of Montenegro, and it has dozens of smaller churches and monasteries, both Catholic and Orthodox, in the surrounding area. Most interesting, to me at least, Bar is also home to, as locals believe, the oldest olive tree in Europe, the Stara Maslina. The legend of this thing goes back more than 2,000 years, and feuding rivals still meet there to discuss peace today. We now also control Podgorica, the capital of modern Montenegro. In the 15th century, Podgorica was a regional trading hub with six rivers, a large fertile plain, and a major lake within a short distance to the city. I'm sure the Venetians would have loved it. The region of Raskia is historically the center of Serbian realms. The fortress at Rash was built under the Byzantine rule to protect the trade routes from Ragusa, Zeta, and Bosnia in the west, to Sofia, Constantinople, and Salonika in the east. The oldest church in Serbia, the Church of Holy Apostle Peter and Paul, was in the area and can still be visited today. The castle and old marketplace, the Stari Togorist, was abandoned in the 13th century but is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A large market, the Novo Togorist, or Novi Pajar, it was called by the Ottomans, grew a short distance east in a more accessible area. Then this new city was the center of Ottoman power in the area. Finally, we have the area of Kosovo and its capital, Pristina. 
Originally settled in the Paleolithic era, Pristina became a major urban center in the Roman Balkans. In medieval times, Pristina grew in power as a regional trade center due to its location on east-west trade routes and close proximity to rich mines, which produced six metric tons of silver per year in this time period. The area is also famous for the Kosovo Field, the site of two major battles between Europeans and Ottomans. In real history, John Hunyadi, the White Knight of Wallachia, and Morad II met there in 1488. Nearly 100,000 men clashed, with the Ottomans emerging as decisive victors, and this battle was the last major attempt to protect Constantinople from the Ottomans, which would fall just five years later. Hopefully, things go better for us this time around. Excellent. I don't know why I did this, but I did this, so deal with it. Kosovo and Rarska will join our territories, and this is good! This is a good... This is a very good start. We've lost the Reconquest Casas Ballet against Serbia. That's okay. It's okay. We will eventually get a, a, a different Casas Ballet on them. Um, come on, Naxos. Why can't I click? There we go. Improve relations with them. We will eventually incorporate them. And you know what? The spy network in, in Aragon um, went belly up for a bit. Uh, which is unfortunate. Let's get another galley. Um, and it's unfortunate, otherwise we would, we would have been able to claim Bari or Salento, probably Bari, just so you know, our territory is a little bit more contiguous. Uh, I would have enjoyed doing that, but, um, but yeah. So we'll keep that guy around for a little bit and then we'll spin him over to increase our relationship with Corfu. We will start to integrate them and everything will be will be good. All right, this is good. Actually, we don't and I don't anticipate having a um, having a war in the immediate future. So let's drop down our army maintenance just just a smidge, just a smidge, because we do eventually. There are some Byzantine separatists in Athens, which is they'll rebel, and once we get up to seventy, oh, there we go. Then I will actually re-increase my maintenance, send our guys over to start to deal with that particular issue. Theodorus has joined a trade league led by Genoa. Okie doke. Bari. There we go. Whoops. Nope. Not that one. Bring that diplomat back. Increase relationship with Corfu. Improve relations. There we go. And we'll try to annex both Nas Naxos and Corfu at the same time, so that we will only get the um, the malice to our uh, diplomatic reputation the once. Because that dramatically does affect your relationship with your other vassals, such as, say, the Roman Empire. Which we don't want to do. Oh, there's Serbian separatists in Kosovo and Raksha. Okay. Okay. The Serbian separatists, there will be 11,000 of them. And there will only be... Oh, dears. You know what I'm going to do? Um, um, I'm not going to do anything, actually. I'm going to let them rebel. That's fine. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll let them rebel. Hopefully this won't be too bad. We'll be the defender in both of these battles. Uh, at least I'm anticipating that they will come into Athens and not into Negroponte. Just curious to me that both Montenegro and Negroponte mean the same thing. No, no, oh sorry, Negroponte is Black Bridge, not Negromonte. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Grand Ball in Venezia. Although rather costly, the court has expressed its desire for glamorous balls, state dinners, or other extravagances to entertain themselves. We can arrange a ball, a masked ball, masquerade, shh, faces on parade, shh, masquerade, uh, Phantom of the Opera, in case you guys don't know. Um, we're getting 10 prestige, lose a little bit of cash, or we will lose prestige. Yeah, let's totally put on a masquerade. Uh, carnival, Venetian Carnival, right? Fantastic. Beautiful stuff. Actually, the first time I went to Venice uh, was during Carnival. I didn't know the Carnival was there. I was still in, in high school. I wasn't that much of a Venetian fanboy as I am now. Oh, man, they went to Kosovo. That's unfortunate. Um, you know what? I'll let them take Kosovo, and then they'll have to invade me some other way. Um, 
so yeah, the first time I went to Venice was during Carnival, and it was beautiful. It was stunning. The colors, the 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 shapes, the 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 life. The, oh man, if you ever get a chance to go to Venice during Carnival, go. My most noble Serene Doge. Uh, your other sun is on trial for corruption and bribery yet again, but this is a different sun because this is a different Doge. There's a Republican tradition, but gain a little bit of power, and that's good. Power is very very good. Um. Really, Aragon? You're not trying to separate? You don't even want to? Even a little bit? Oh, yeah. The Serbian Separatists are going into Turkey. To, to, to the Ottoman Empire, rather. Which means the Ottomans will smash them. The Ottomans will lose a little, little, little bit of, of manpower as a result of this. But hey, it's one less battle that I need to engage in. Which is always good. Always good. Boom. Oh, yeah. Also, it occurs to me. Um, Zagaljak? No, that wasn't the Kotor. Was the main was the main Venetian city in 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 Zeta in Montenegro. So we're going to um, rename that. I just I just wanted to just a little thing. Milan has dishonored their military alliance with Frara. All right, cool. Italy's smashing things up. Okay, that is acceptable. That is definitely acceptable. Serbian separatists have arrived in Kosovo, and they're going to smash us. Oh no, we smashed them. Hey, that's good. But we do, will need to gain another 4,000 men. That sucks. We only gain 142 each month. Um, and the Romans still have a really, really high liberty desire. Really, really high. Because <sighs> of diplomatic... Why is our diplomatic reputation so low? Overextension. We shouldn't have over. Oh yeah, Kosovo and Raska. I forgot we had them. Oops. I'm like, no, we've already incorporated Athens. We don't need to. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that at all. Ulmborg is joined a trade league led by Genoa. Fine. De Denmark has announced this as a rival. Oh, why is Denmark our rival? Our spheres have not overlapped in any way, shape, or form up until. Uh, up until this point in time in history, either real life history or in game history, that is insane. I guess everyone's like, no, you know what? You know what? Copenhagen's the real canal city. That's not a Danish accent, but whatever. Um, maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. I'm. I'm just. I'm just playing this. I should probably. We are making enough cash uh, per month that I could probably spend a little bit of. A little bit of cash on, say, reducing unrest and gaining political power. Or trade efficiency, that's always good, especially for a merchant republic like Venice. And land force limit modifier plus 10%. Let's gain a little bit more diplomatic, military, and administrative power. Good. Our relations with Naxos is high enough that we can deal with them. All right. There's a rebellion in Athens. And hopefully we will smash them. Whew. That was actually close. That was really close. We can pass the Advancements of Religion Act. Make it a legal offense for servants and the like to read our Holy Bible. Reserve the right for clerics and noblemen. Missionary strength plus 5%, but institution spread... Uh, sorry, missionary strength plus 0.05%, institution spread minus 5%. One of the things with... Uh, with expanding east, is we are a Catholic nation expanding into heavily Orthodox and Sunni, er, Sunni, or Shiite, Sunni areas. So that actually that extra little half a percent really actually does matter significantly because it's half a percent per month per missionary. So uh, we will embrace the Renaissance. Oh yeah which will then allow us to get administrative technology. Housing the machinery of government is as important as the machinery itself. And we should never forget that the importance of religion when doing so. We can now build a church. Yes. Yes. I've never been this excited to build churches in my life, but churches give us tax income. We just increased our tax income by 0.5 ducats a month. Brilliant. Brilliant. This is, this is good times. We're almost at the time where we can start to incorporate um, Corfu. 
So what we're going to do is, if I recall correctly, annexing Naxos will take 48, which will take a full year. By that time, uh, our relationship with uh, Corfu will be high enough that we can uh, we can integrate them, and that will only take a single month for that particular territory. So everything will be good. Everything will be done at the same time. Why are we... Oh, right. We're losing money because of reinforcements. So let's drop it down so we're just still gaining a little bit of money. Our armies will still be reinforcing. Everything will be good. Another grand ball. I don't have the money to have a grand ball. So we're going to not have the grand ball. Uh, military technology will go up. And the Pike Square. Through the Middle Ages, cavalry's dominance was being challenged by disciplined pikemen. In battles such as Bannockburn or the Golden Spur, Bannockburn, Sabaton, okay, uh, cavalry was defeated by pikes. A combination of improved training and discipline and the addition of swordsmen to provide close combat support has raised this formation to the peak of its efficiency. Brilliant. Amazing. Love it. Kosovo is now considered part of our patrimony. Love it. We can make... Oh, actually, we have all three territories in Raskia, so we will totally make the estate. Good. We still have... We couldn't make Kosovo a core. That's okay. We will shortly. And... In one month, we'll be able to vassalize Corfu. Beautiful. Everything is coming up. Milhouse. Oh, no, another month, another month. And that's okay, we're only actually halfway through the vassalization of Nassau, so there we go. <laughs> the Family Act. Um, yeah, this is a reference to a very, very um, inappropriate joke, but anyways. The aristocrats of Venetia have been pushing for legislation popularly referred to as the Family Act, in an effort to, provide, to prevent innocent minds from the twisted plays and novels spread forth by libertine authors of recent years. The main outage but Outrage behind the initiative for the Family Act is an obscene play, a family act, traveling the country which satirizes the excesses of the aristocratic classes. Humiliated and revolted, the victims of its mockery are now demanding that the Republic prevents it from spreading further. Interesting. What do they call an act like that? The aristocrats. Eh. Nah. Liberty does not exist to serve obscenities. We can lose stability or the aristocrats can lose 20 influence. Yeah. The aristocrats will lose influence. I don't care. I'm not losing stability just to prevent somebody's sense of self-worth. Uh, Crimean Khanate. The new Khan will offer Crimean servitude as a march of the Ottomans. Uh oh. Uh oh. We must seek Ottoman protection. Do the Ottomans actually get it? No, they didn't actually take it. Okay. Cool. Um, there's an election. We will keep Leonardo Dalviano. Definitely keep him around. We're almost ready to incorporate Naxos. This will be what, trade dispute, Flanders, don't really care. Okay, come on. Enough with these trade dispute pop-ups. I really don't. You know what? I should probably just change how those pop-ups are popped up, I guess. Uh, we'll bring this guy back. Come on. There we go. And yeah, in the next month, Naxos will, will be annexed, so we will also annex Corfu at the same time. And if I did this properly, boom, integrating Naxos and Corfu at the same time, boom, or sorry, Kirkira, integration is a slow process. We gained 10 prestige, we gained two new territories, we gained new navies, and I will clean all of that up off camera. But for now, I'm Carter the Great Bear of the North. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, please comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Most importantly, learn the history behind the games that you play. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all next time in the most serene republic. Ciao.